I hear all the time when people are planning to introduce formative assessment, they say things like, wouldn't it be a good idea if we all agree to work on the same technique? No, it's actually a very bad idea, and here's why. Back in 1980, Meredith Belbin wrote a very influential book called Management Teams, Why They Succeed or Fail. What he pointed out was that people adopt certain kinds of roles. There's natural roles they feel comfortable with, and when they're in a management team, they will naturally play that role. People can play different roles if they have to for a little while, but the point he made was that when the pressure is on, when it's really time to get the product out of the door, people revert to type. He, he reckoned there were eight types, and he called them company worker, innovator, shaper, chairperson, resource investigator, monitor evaluator, completer finisher, and team worker. There's a questionnaire that you can use in his book to find out what kind of role you are most likely to play. But the most important thing about Belbin's work was he said for each of these roles, there is a strength. That's what they're good at. And complementing that is an allowable weakness. These are things that these people aren't going to be very good at, and that's OK because they're good at other things. And so what Belbin was advocating was if people have these strengths, then don't worry about their weaknesses. Don't try to make them better at everything. Try to complement them with people who balance their strengths. And this has led to an approach to human resource development in business, which is called strength-based talent development. So we don't try to make everybody the same. We try to help people work on their strengths. Now, I think that's very important in the context of teaching, because I think your students will benefit more by helping you become really exceptional at the things you're already good at than trying to make every single teacher exactly the same. In the first study that we did in uh, Oxfordshire and Medway, there were two teachers in one of the schools, and we called them Derek and Philip in the book. Derek is an extraordinarily skilled questioner. He's probably one of the best questioners I've ever seen. Seeing him working with a group of students and drawing ideas out of them and weaving them together, it's absolutely wonderful. So for him, a focus on questioning was absolutely natural. Now, his colleague in the school, who we called Philip, we walk into Philip's classroom, we often can't see him because he's crouching down talking to some students. For him, the idea of standing at the front and, and, and leading everything didn't feel very comfortable. For him, it was much more natural for him to focus on peer assessment and self-assessment. So to try and make Derek work on peer assessment and self-assessment, or to make Philip work on questioning, would have actually not as been as useful as helping each of them become really, really good at the things that they want to develop. So I think the first thing is that we have to give every teacher a choice, a choice to work on the things that will make the most difference to their practice. 